Hi there. Uh, with respect to the people who put in their time and life energy into this uh, effort tonight, uh, thank you, but I would just like to say that I think this hearing is not legitimate. I don't think it's representative of our communities. I think the whole thing has been a sham in favor of carding, and they're getting us to consent to be governed to this practice. Let's call carding what it is, policing. That's all it is, targeting policing. The police, in my opinion, must go. And there's many communities who do not recognize their authority and illegitimate power. So my speech and presence here tonight with my friends is an invitation to community resistance to policing. So, why must the police go? Why must Cardin go? Because there's no need for a police. Right now, we're standing on stolen native land. Less than 50% of the land mass of Canada was ever under tree. In America, <laughs> told, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate the sentiment. In America, African American people face slavery. And right now in America, every 26 hours, if you're African American, you have a chance to be murdered by police in their various different cities. They have the highest rates of incarceration since slavery. Right here in Canada, the highest groups in prison are indigenous people, African Canadians, non white peoples, and migrants without status. How does that happen? How does that happen? Policing and carding. That's exactly how it begins. So, first of all, we see that the process of police coming into existence in our country is illegitimate. It involves colonization, slavery, and the creation of racial segregation, okay? Secondly, I don't think any form of affirmative action, diversity training, or inclusive forms of policing or reforms can change this institution. We need to abolish it altogether because, of, as pointed out by our community members here, the relationship. The relationship since the 1800s has been the police as a social control mechanism on our communities, criminalizing us. Myself, I was criminalized at 15 years old. I spent time in EMDC and cells downtown. It took me seven years to clean my police record, okay? So what's going on? Our community members are being separated, set apart from each other, made to compete over resources. We have one in three London police officers earning over $100,000 a year plus benefits, while my best friend and lover earns less than $23,000 a year and cannot even bring her mother over from Colombia right now because the government says she has to earn at least $30,000 a year. Thank you very much. So, I'm very ignorant. I'll admit that right off the start. We are with you, brother. I, I, don't, I don't know a lot of things in life. I'll admit to that. And I have a limited life experience. But the laws and the police have argued back at me. They justify themselves with personal safety. They justify themselves with our general security. And they justify themselves through character by using physical force to make people follow laws which may be illegitimate. For example, personal safety. Okay, Sammy Atim was shot nine times by police officers in a streetcar in Toronto in 2013, right? Another shooting just happened in Toronto August 19th where a person was murdered by police, okay? We can clearly see from people talking right here, they don't feel safe in our community, so their personal safety is not assured whatsoever. So that first argument is invalidated. Second, I'm going to tighten up just to get on. Oh, absolutely, but this is the only chance that we get to speak. So I'm going to finish. I have three more points to make. Okay, so I'm going to offer my solution. Please. The second point, uh, it's too high a cost to our specific communities. Carding and policing in general is criminalization and ongoing colonial practices. That's all it is. They're separating people based on their social position, either their identity, their biology, their social class, their educational attainment, all of those various things, okay? So clearly we can see that there's too high a cost to our specific communities. Thirdly, the high cost to our municipalities. The London police are going to earn $100 million next year for their police budget. That's higher per capita than Toronto and many other police forces. Why are we doing such things? Why? It makes no sense to All of those police officers are talented individuals who can do other things than carry guns on their hips and follow arbitrary laws that seem to change every week. Look at the marijuana laws. This week they're illegal. Next week it's your children criminalized and thrown in jail. And then it costs us $35,000 a year to house an inmate in federal facilities. That's not fair. That's not right whatsoever. It's not justice. Ask yourself if that's justice. Nobody here will say that that is justice. And so, your point. my last point oh, is point. communities should have in between 1% and 5% of the police budget or just abolish police altogether. But if we can get access to the police budget, let's start beneficial social community services. Let's start to fight income inequality and problems like when our plants close and then we have an increase in domestic violence. Let's not leave jobs and people strung out in our communities forced to fight each other. Let's take that money that's being spent on us and use it. Sorry, sir? Equity and inclusiveness. Um, um, one more time. Equity and exclusiveness. Yes, equity 
idea of inclusiveness. That's a very good point. We could take all the people who are out of work, all the people who have been recently criminalized, team them with young university students who are under and unemployed in their specific things like healthcare and community services and take the police money instead of criminalized people and create jobs and create real social services and good beneficial communities. We really can do that. Thank you.